Lowe's has our widest selection ever with all the trimmings. Save 100 less. Start with Lowe's. Live from the KDKA Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is KDKA-TV Morning News. Right now on the KDKA TV Morning News, we have the latest after a fatal shooting in Wilkinsburg. Lindsay Ward is working the story for us this morning for KDKA. We're also following what happened on the fight, and no, it wasn't big plays. It was this. This is what people are talking about this morning after the Steelers take on the Browns in Cleveland. Along with meteorologist Ron Smiley and Selena Pompiani, Heather and Rick, glad you're with us here on this Friday morning. And we'll send things over to Ron Smiley to get a check on our forecast as you're heading out the door this morning. Yeah, not as brutal as that game last night. At least we get a little reprieve from the cold weather today. High temperatures close to the 40 degree mark today. We are going to be looking at some sunshine in the morning hours. More clouds. We'll call it partly to mostly cloudy as we're heading into the afternoon hours. It's 25 in Pittsburgh this hour. I'm expecting temperatures right about here for the morning, but I got to tell you our dew point is is all the way down to 20 degrees still has clear sky so we might fall down to maybe 24 or 23 degrees we'll watch closely for that you can see a lot of moisture moving our way coming in from the south we don't have to worry about that that'll stay uh, hugging the coast for us it's the clouds just off to the north up into around the toronto area ontario you see the snow there it wasn't much but that's a cold front that's heading our way and that'll bring some chillier weather our way for the weekend. Today, though, we're going to go 40 for your expected high. You can see those partly cloudy skies by 3 o'clock. We'll talk about the rest of the weekend, including a chance for some teens. And we'll show you how low the temperature goes coming up. Right now, no Salina, standing by with a look at traffic. Good morning. Thanks, Ron. Good morning. 5 o'clock on the dot on this Friday morning, and we're off to a great start heading into downtown Pittsburgh. Traffic is very light on the parkways on 28, on 51, over the Liberty Bridge, not finding anything to slow you down so we'll check out the drive times and make sure they're all in good shape and they are we have the parkway east west and north your commute at or under 15 minutes and we're looking pretty good if you need to take route 28 into the city as i mentioned 51 to the liberty tubes very quiet as well and no issues on i-79 from the neville island bridge to the parkway rick police overnight confirming that a man is dead after two people forced their way into a home in wilkinsburg and shot him lindsey ward joins us now live with more on what police are saying and how it happened rick good morning county police just released new information this morning and they say there were actually numerous people inside that home when the shooting took place including a baby now this happened in wilkinsburg around 10 30 last night and police say it was along woodlawn avenue where this home invasion happened that's where they found a man shot multiple times in the upper torso area they say the 42 year old was found dead at the scene now detectives with a county homicide unit stepped in after that and through their investigation they learned three men, a woman, and a baby were inside the home when this invasion happened. It looks like um, two suspects entered the home with handguns, um, held the residents uh, at bay. Uh, they encountered the victim and they shot him uh, multiple times. And police say those two suspects took off soon after that. Um, at the time, police are also speaking to witnesses, hoping to get more information. At this time, nobody has been arrested. Reporting live outside of county police headquarters, Lindsay Ward, KDK News. I thought it was pretty cowardly, kind of pretty bush league. I made a mistake. I lost my cool. And, well, now we're good. New reaction this morning to this brutal moment during the Steelers' loss last night. Mason Rudolph hit in the head with his own helmet by Miles Garrett after Garrett had ripped it off during a scrum. The NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reporting all the players that you see right here, including Marquise Pouncey, who was ejected, are going to be under review by the league for possible suspensions. And that was not the only ugly incident during last night's game, as a couple of Steelers were injured on what were some questionable hits, too. We have both angles covered with team coverage this morning, starting with Rich Walsh, who has locker room reaction to the wild brawl in the final seconds of the game. 
It was bedlam in this end zone towards the end of the Steelers-Browns game. A chaotic scene unlike anything I've ever seen in an NFL game. Miles Garrett rips off Mason Rudolph's helmet, then uses it as a weapon to hit Rudolph across the top of his head. I was in the locker room after the game to see what they thought of what happened, and I can tell you Pouncey and his teammates did not hold back. Y'all know what happened. Y'all seen exactly what happened. That's, that's, no, that ain't a part of football. Y'all been, been reporting for a long time. Y'all never even seen that. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I thought it was pretty cowardly, kind of pretty Bush League, which, you know, there's plenty of tape out there to watch. I haven't seen it replay, but yes, I, I really haven't seen it, anything like that yet. Uh, I know there's scuffles in the game. Um, tensions fly high, but uh, for, it to, for it to get to a point where a guy to use a helmet as a weapon and hit a guy in the head, um, uncalled for, I'm all about being competitive, but that'd be one of the stupidest things I ever saw. And these two teams meet in just two weeks back in Pittsburgh on December 1st. I would imagine there will be some type of suspensions. I would also imagine this will carry over into that game. With the Steelers on the road in Cleveland, Rich Walsh, KDK News. Now, we did have some from Miles Garrett there just a couple of minutes ago. Here's more on what the Browns defensive player had to say after last night's game. That's embarrassing. You know, what I did was more foolish, and I shouldn't have allowed myself to, to slip like that. Well, we should mention Mason Rudolph told reporters after the game he is fine despite that hit to the head. Others not quite so lucky as several key players for the Steelers, particularly on offense, leaving with injuries. Lisa Washington is here now with more on what happened there. Good morning, Heather and Rick. Now, this happened before that big fight. Of course, there were three big names the Steelers lost during the actual game last night. The running back, James Conner, left with a shoulder injury, and wide receivers Juju Smith-Schuster and the rookie Deontay Johnson were both forced out of the game with concussions. Those plays where they suffer those concussions are pretty hard to watch as well. Smith-Schuster was sandwiched between three Browns players while trying to bring in a pass. This was during the second quarter. There was no penalty called for that hit. Now in the second half of the game, it's the rookie Deontay Johnson taking a hit to the head while trying to run down the pass. The Browns' Demarius Rando was penalized and then ejected from that game. Now after the game, head coach Mike Tomlin did not have any update on those players' conditions, only confirming those injuries we do expect to hear more from Coach Tomlin when he gives his weekly press conference. That's going to be next week, of course. But a lot of reaction coming into the injuries during the game and, of course, that big fight right there in the final seconds. It's so unfortunate that I think a lot of the talk about what happened last night is going to be strictly negative. You know, what do you mean? About the injuries, about what happened on the field with the hits. A lot of that talk is going to be negative. Oh, for sure. And we're coming not up, see a lot of positive. No, talk. coming up in our next half hour, we're going to share with you some of the reaction from social media, including the agent for Mason Rudolph. Oh, okay, right. interesting. Thanks, right. Lisa. Sure. Now, the other game that was going on, that one a little closer to home. Kit playing a home football game at Heinz Field, and they needed overtime, but they got the win. Kenny Pickett helping the Panthers get in the end zone right there. The quarterback also helping them through the air. Final score, 34-27 in OT. First victory over the University of North Carolina in football since Pitt joined the ACC. Moving on to politics now and happening today, House Democrats will hold the second day of public impeachment hearings. Marie Yovanovitch is scheduled to testify. She is the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, recalled by President Trump. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi appeared to raise the stakes of the inquiry by publicly accusing the president of bribery. We will be carrying CBS News live coverage of today's impeachment inquiry hearing, and that's expected to begin at 9 o'clock this morning right here on KDKA TV. Because of that, it's unlikely that you'll see Pittsburgh today live this morning on KDKA, but you will be able to watch it in its entirety on Pittsburgh CW, where it airs every weekday at 1 p.m. Another deadly school shooting, this time at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita, California. Police say a student identified as Nathan Burhow killed two students and injured three others before shooting himself in the head yesterday morning. He carried out this shooting on his 16th birthday. Police have not identified a motive for the attack. New this morning, Bethel Park Police asking for help to find this missing woman. Jamie Ray Feeden was last seen two months ago on September 15th. She is 33 and is 4 feet 1 inch tall. If you have seen her, you're asked to contact police.
Class will be canceled today in the Steel Valley School District. As the district says, students at the high school, the middle school, and the technical center have the day off. So it's just those three schools because there's an issue with not only a fire alarm, but also an emergency alert system in that part of the district. I noticed this morning you're bringing a little bit of spring with you on these chilly days, wearing flowers <laughs> on your tie and your shirt. It's nice yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah. Refreshing. It's the little things, right? Yeah, it is the little <laughs> things. We will at least see some sunshine today, so right which is great because we yeah. just reported uh, that at least some people think that Pittsburgh is a miserable place to live. Gloomiest city. Gloomiest, yeah. right? Love so gloomiest. I don't think that that we get some sunshine over the winter months. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, let's talk about your forecast. We will start st start to see some sunshine first thing this morning, uh, but temperatures are going to be on the cool side. In fact, you can look at those temperatures now. And once again, during this time of the year, especially when you have a cold air mass, it's those clear mornings when you start to see the coldest of the temperatures. Uh, it's 25 in uh, the Pittsburgh airport this hour, Wexford at 23. We're actually looking at temperatures about where they were yesterday, where we had cloud cover, and we'll have a chance of hitting maybe 24 or 23 for our morning low. It's 28 downtown Pittsburgh, West Mifflin at 29, and Bell Vernon coming in at 23 degrees. Greensburg also at 25 degrees for your temperature. Uh, here's your forecast. Some sunny conditions in the morning hours, but that gives way to more clouds as we're heading into the afternoon hours. We'll go a high temperature today of about 40 degrees. We're tracking another cool front. It arrives tonight, and we'll tell you what that means for temperatures over the weekend coming up. All right, looking forward to that, Ron. A big reimbursement following the Station Square train derailment from last year. How much Norfolk Southern is forced to pay out? University of Pennsylvania canceling the final games of the season for its women's volleyball team. The reason why the university pulled the plug. South Hills Kia is Pittsburgh's home for all things Kia. Right now, the Kia Holiday Sales Event with the 2020 Kia Sportage. Lease at $179 a month. Hundreds to choose from. South Hills Kia on Route 19 Peters Township and SouthHillsKia.com. One needs more and more help to live safely on his own. His daughter fears she'll have to take him to a nursing home. Between John and her family, she's worn out. Fortunately, she found Life Pittsburgh. Life provides support for all of John's needs. Medical, medications, home care, and more. All at no cost. See if you qualify. Call Life Pittsburgh at 412-388-8050. That's 388-8050. Save your winter jacket for when you're outside. Galise Services wants you to test your heating system early in the season before you need it. Since your system hasn't run for a year, there's a chance of unwanted malfunctions. And since most homeowners discover their heating problems and call for service at the same time, a flood of service requests is inevitable. This leads to longer wait times and higher prices because now it's considered peak season. Beat the rush. Turn your system on early. And if there's a problem, simply call Galise for a $59 service tune-up and safety check. Call Galise. At Point Park University in the heart of downtown Pittsburgh, our towers are made with steel, not ivory. They're powered by innovation, intelligence, and effort. We understand there's no substitute for real-world experience and career-building connections. Our curriculum engages students with distinctive experiential learning opportunities. Point Park's pioneering co-op program empowers qualified students to work in full-time paid positions with our corporate partners while earning college credits. Career ready. That's the point. Point Park University. Molino Area Rugs, custom styled and sized exclusively for you. To many, I'm a Hall of Fame football player, but I'm also a family man and a proud Pittsburgher. I'm also a United Healthcare Medicare Advantage member. As a running back, my teammates were there to protect me. As a United Healthcare member, I still have a strong team supporting me. Their award-winning customer service team and a strong network of doctors and hospitals give me peace of mind so I can get the care I need when and where I want it. Call today. This KDKA News Report is brought to you by United Healthcare. We've learned new details about the fatal shooting in Homewood earlier this week. The latest information from authorities includes the name of the woman who was killed, Kiera Harris. She and a man were shot at the corner of Kelly and Collier Streets Wednesday night. Harris was rushed to the hospital, but she died in the hospital. The man was found dead next to the car, but at this point, his name has not been released by authorities. Now on the way to the hospital from that scene, two ambulances crashed. One was transporting Harris, the other was following behind. 
Another ambulance had to be called to take Harris to the hospital. Police say the collision did not in any way interfere with her medical treatment. Four teenagers now face charges after a fight on Bethel Park School District property last month. They're charged with simple assault. Police say the fight happened after school let out for the day. There were no school events going on at the time of the fight. A man convicted of killing a police officer is now on death row. The same jurors who found Ramel Holt guilty of killing New Kensington police officer Brian Shaw unanimously decided to sentence him to death. Holt is now the 170... 137th person on death row in Pennsylvania. However, Governor Tom Wolf previously issued a moratorium on the death penalty. Allegheny County Controller Chelsea Wagner's trial is underway in Detroit. Lawyers delivered opening statements yesterday. Wagner is charged with interfering with police during an incident with her husband at a hotel. She says it was the police who acted improperly. It's an abrupt end to the season for the University of Pennsylvania women's volleyball team. University officials canceled the games. The last two games of the year they will not play. They found what they called vulgar, offensive, and disrespectful posters in the team's locker room. In a statement, the student athletic director said the behavior of the team exhibited is unacceptable and it will not be tolerated. Norfolk Southern will pay the Port Authority more than two and a half million dollars to cover the cleanup and repair costs from the Station Square train derailment. This is according to the Post Gazette. A freight train went off the tracks and damaged part of the T tracks last summer. The Port Authority had to replace part of the track, some electrical lines, and make other repairs. It also had to offer shuttles to people who could not take the T. A new life could be coming to the site of the former Shop and Save in the Hill District as the Urban Redevelopment Authority voted to buy that building and to redevelop the space. The store closed back in March because of financial problems. Now the URA is saying there's going to be a public process to decide exactly what to do with the space. It is unclear what will happen there, but it's pretty clear on the street what people want. Make another store, another shopping store for the people on the hill. They need it. They should bring a grocery store back. Our elderly, our, our elderly people in this community are suffering. There's nowhere around here to go. The URA says that Aldi was interested in that space at one point. It will reach out to companies not only locally, but across the country as well. The Port Authority is expanding service to the North Hills. The McKnight Flyer will have new stops on Route 19 in Ross and McCandless beginning in March. The new stops include the Northland Library and CCAC North Campus. And now, the Armina Stone Real-Time Traffic Report. At 516, I do have a traffic alert for drivers in Strongstown, Indiana County. There is a crash and a road closure, and this is right along Route 403. So 403 is shut down in both directions. It's between Malloy Hollow Road and the intersection there with Route 422. So if you need to travel around those two roadways this morning, definitely take an alternate route and use caution around that area. Checking in on all of the drive times closer to us here in downtown Pittsburgh. We're in great shape. We're checking out I-79 from Bridgeville to the Parkway West, 51 from 88 to the inside Liberty Tunnel, and then we're also looking at 28. Look at those drive times. Hopefully they stay on the lighter side since it is Friday, but we will, of course, monitor them for you all morning and let you know when we do see more traffic on the roadways. The volume is light on the Parkway North, Parkway West from the airport, and the Parkway Parkway East from the Turnpike into downtown Pittsburgh, and we'll also check on the Parkway West outbound. If you are heading in that direction toward Pittsburgh International Airport, you should not find any slowdowns this morning. That commute also right around 15 minutes, and 79 from the other direction, the Neville Island Bridge to the Parkway West. A beautiful ride there, just over five minutes. Now up to seven. I'll still take that, Ron. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, it's going to be a gorgeous day as well. So, you know, we're looking at temperatures now holding steady uh, right at around 25 degrees. This is about where we expect our uh, low temperatures to stop at this morning. Winds are calm. The barometer 30, 31 hundredths of an inch of the dew point coming in at 20 degrees. Clear skies and no wind. So we'll watch that closely. But at least data was shown about 25 for our morning lows. Even though the dew point is a couple of degrees away. 26 in Butler, Franklin 27, Du Bois. Good morning, 26 for you. Latrobe 27 and Washington coming in at 20 degrees. Expecting a high to dim today about 40 degrees with increasing clouds as we're heading into the afternoon. So just be ready for that. Winds will basically be out of the west. They'll have a little bit of a northerly component to them. 5 to 10 miles an hour is what it looks like at this point. Here's how I think your day looks. 8 o'clock temperature 27, 30 at 10. Noon temperature coming in at 35. You can see those clouds starting to thicken as we're heading into the afternoon.
afternoon. We have clouds to our north. We have clouds to our south at this point. And if we zoomed out just a little bit, we also have this front that's heading our way. You can see a little bit of the snow that's wrapped in that. This is at 9 o'clock. This is what we call a backdoor front because you'll see the snow. It's actually moving down to the southwest. So we're getting the backside of this front. But as it comes down, uh, it should start to dry out. But we could still have an isolated snow shower or two, especially along I-80 and a couple of flurries uh, flying as that front passes through. Besides that, though, the weekend is looking dry. Cold air is going to settle in behind all of this as well. In fact, looking at the next seven days, you can see right there what's going on. We expect a high of 40 today, 38 your Saturday high. But here's the good news. After those two days, the rest of the seven day temperatures will be warmer than what we're expecting today and also tomorrow. We'll let you know, though, we're waking up on Sunday morning with temperatures in the teens. We bring it down to 19 degrees. Then we start to warm up, get a little bit more seasonal as we're heading into next work week. 46 your Monday high 42 on Tuesday and Wednesday, but seasonal averages this time of the year. I believe it's 52 is the average high. So by Thursday, we could actually see a day where we're actually above average. Well, that would be nice. Mm. So 40 be. degrees today. Is that enough that it'll sort of melt whatever snow is around? I mean, is yeah. that warm enough? I, I think so. I mean, most of the snow, at least in the South Hills where I saw was gone. Now, the further north you go, the more snow you're going to have. Um, but yeah, we should start to get most of the snow out of here today. If you remember earlier in the week when we, before the snow, I said, hey, we're probably going to still have some snow around all the way through Saturday. So it looks like probably today kind of wrap things up and then for the rest of the week going into next week at least all the snow should be gone all right very good all right. anything in particular we need to know about as far as construction or things like that for this weekend nothing all right. i actually did not get the update though from pendon later this afternoon we'll probably get a whole list of traffic alerts for weekend <laughs> construction right now no info to pass along yeah. All right. Well, you were the uh, the focus of attention last night at Shaler oh, High School at your alma mater. It uh -oh. shouldn't have been me, though. It really should have been my teacher. Um, my former teacher at Shaler High School, Mr. Lee Myers, he nominated me to be a distinguished alumnus this oh. year. And I was honored with the award last year. But I, really, it's all him. You know, That's he was awesome. a great teacher and a great mentor, continues to be a wonderful friend. Um, and this was during the National Honor Society induction ceremony last night. So congratulations to the 18 sure. students, juniors and seniors who... What did he teach? Um, it, it was a broadcasting a class. Broadcasting. Yeah. Who and was that other handsome male that was standing next to you? That was Frankie, but this is, this is the <laughs> Shaler husband. area TV <laughs> news set. So I had to sit down at the TV set last night. How about that? So, Still looks like you're in high school there. <laughs> Congratulations. I, I sat down in the female anchor chair, so I don't know if you noticed. I, I was know missing there was one. last night. Yeah, I did notice yeah. it was empty. Yeah. I was doing a Junior Achievement Award uh, function last go. night at the Weston, so yeah. I was all dressed up in a tuxedo. So. Ooh, oh, oh, we're fancy. Photo. We need to see your pictures. <laughs> They're right somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Dream job for many, even for this lady. Can you imagine if Selena had a chance to watch literally dozens I of do. Hallmark Christmas movies? <laughs> I already do. But then they would want to know what you think of all of them. We'll tell you more about that. And pay you. Plus, we are going to have more on how some are disagreeing why Pittsburgh is call being called one of the gloomiest cities. I'll tell you who's saying that. Tri-State, because Tri-State's got the biggest selection of workstations, quality name brand seating, and wooden laminate office furniture. Because our Morgantown showroom is now open. Because we're renovating our showroom to better serve you. Because we custom design furniture and deliver it to your door. Why Tri-State? Why would you go anywhere else? Visit one of our convenient showrooms or go to tristateofficefurniture.com. Tri-State Office Furniture, two great showrooms, one section road, McKee's Rocks. A new study is shining a not-so-bright light on Pittsburgh. Best Places ranking Pittsburgh as the fifth gloomiest city in the country. Cleveland is number four with Seattle and Portland at the top of that list for gloomy places. Best Places says it considers things like the percentage of cloud cover, the average hours of daylight, and precipitation. You can see where other cities rank by going to kdka.com.
probably know a few people in your life who really love watching Christmas movies, specifically the Hallmark Channel and the originals that they put out this time of year. The job would be perfect for them, and I know one person in particular, Selena Pompiani, would be perfect for this. The tech company CenturyLink is taking applications for the Hallmark movie Dream Job. It requires you to watch 24 Hallmark Christmas movies in the 12 days before Christmas and document your feelings about the movie marathon on social media. The tough job pays $1,000. The company is accepting applications through Friday, December 6th. And yes, yeah, Selena, you, you would love this job, would you not? 24 of them in 12 days. Could I you watch that many? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> I, I think I've watched over 50 in 12 days. Oh my goodness. Wait a second. <laughs> Four a day? You, I, you don't know how much I watch the Hallmark <laughs> Channel. I love it so much. Mm. I think I've seen every movie. Does she watch uh, it over there with you in the morning, Ron? She tries to. As soon as I I walk in, I'm like, coop, <laughs> off. Take the batteries out and throw it away. Uh, I'm going to watch right. one on the break. Yeah, Bye. yeah. Well, it feels almost like a Hallmark <laughs> movie out there right now with these temperatures mid to low 20s. As we're starting off, we'll be right back after the break with a full look at your forecast and the latest headlines. Armina Stone, Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery, is teaming up with me, pro football player Terrell Edmonds. Looking to update your countertops? Check out this amazing marble, granite, and quartz. When you purchase with Amina Stone, mention me, Terrell Edmonds, and they'll make a donation to my family's foundation that mentors and supports Pittsburgh's youth. Team up with us, and you win too. Visit ArminaStone.com and their new showrooms in Harmerville and Robinson at the Point. you really want is at Nissan's Black Friday event. Save big on our tech-filled lineup, like Rogue or Altima with available intelligent all-wheel drive. Hurry in now. Get 0% financing for up to 72 months on 12 models or save up to $3,000 on Rogue. Every time you show up, you make the moment. And they make history. December 19th and 21st in Pittsburgh. Nothing beats the crowd. Visit NCAA.com slash volleyball to get your tickets today. South Hills Jeep is Pittsburgh's home for all things Jeep. The Jeep Black Friday sales event has the 2019 Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4, just $129 a month. Hundreds to choose from. South Hills Jeep on Route 19, Peters Township, and SouthHillsJeep.com. Xfinity Internet. Internet's better because it streams better. Introducing Xfinity Flex, a personalized streaming dashboard that puts all your favorites in one place. Search less, watch more. With the voice-controlled 4K streaming device that's made for you. It's effortless, and it's included with Xfinity Internet for no additional cost. Simple, easy, awesome. Get Xfinity Internet and add a Flex 4K streaming device on us. It's two amazing services for the price of one. Click, call, or visit a store today. Live from the KDKA Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is KDKA-TV Morning News. Right now on the KDKA Morning News, police investigating a deadly home invasion in Wilkinsburg. Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph takes some big hits, including one with his own helmet. Miles Garrett delivering that blow that has the sports world talking this morning. And you can be sure there will be plenty of suspensions coming after a brawl at the end of the Steelers-Browns game. Mm -hmm. Also taking a look on live, or online, excuse me, at a lot of the reaction to last night's fight, including some who are calling for assault charges to be filed against the player who started it. And we'll get to that in just a moment, breaking all of that down. But first, we want to see what the forecast is looking like for your morning. Here's meteorologist Ron Smiley. Yeah, you know, temperatures mid to low 20s as we're starting off with clear skies this morning. Should be dry today. We do have in the overnight hours a chance for maybe a couple of flurries out there as a cold front slides in from the north. You can see a little bit of the snow already wrapped in that as it moves towards Toronto to the north and Buffalo as well. Uh, high temperatures today, we're going to go right at 40 degrees. A lot of sunshine this morning. A few more clouds around this afternoon. Afternoon. It looks like we stay chilly all weekend long, and we'll have that forecast coming up right now. Let's head over, take a look at traffic.
Ron, yeah, we do want to talk about two crashes that we just got word of. One is on Route 28 in the inbound direction, and this one is right near exit 8 by Fox Chapel Road. So it does look like the volume is increasing in that area of 28. And then we also have a crew heading to the scene of a crash reported in North Fayette Township with power lines down. So this one is on Cliff Mine Road between Logan Road and Gorewood Drive. So we will let you in on more information that we receive once our crew arrives to the scene there in North Fayette. Heather. Selena, thank you. Police overnight confirmed a man is dead after two people forced their way into a home in Wilkinsburg. They shot and killed him as Lindsay Ward joins us now with more on how police say the whole incident started. Rick and Heather, good morning. Yeah, we just learned new information from county police about an hour ago, and they say numerous people were inside the home at the time when the shooting happened, including a baby. Now, it was just before 1030 last night when Wilkinsburg police were on scene along Woodlawn Avenue for a home invasion. That's where they found a man shot multiple times in the upper torso area. They say the 42-year-old man was dead at the scene. Now, detectives with the county homicide unit stepped in and through their investigation, investigation. They learned three men, a woman and a baby, were inside the home when this invasion happened. It looks like um, two suspects entered the home with handguns, um, held the residents uh, at bay. Uh, they encountered the victim and they shot him uh, multiple times. And police say those two men then took off quickly after. Now, at this time, no arrests have been made, and police are speaking to witnesses, hoping to get more information. As soon as we learn information from police, we will let you know. Reporting live outside of county police headquarters, Lindsay Ward, KDK News. Sports fans, particularly football fans, talking about this ugly incident at the end of last night's game. Browns up by 14 points when defensive end Miles Garrett rips Mason Rudolph's helmet off and hits him in the head with it. The NFL Network's Ian Rappaport is reporting all players involved, including Marquise Pouncey, who came to the rescue of his quarterback, was ejected for his part in the brawl. And now Rappaport saying they expect all those players to be under league review for possible suspensions. There is reaction from all around the sporting world this morning. Lisa Washington joins us as she's been gathering some of that reaction for us this morning. Lisa? Rick, good morning. We wanted to share with you some of the reaction happening on social media following the incident last night between the Steelers and the Browns. Take a look at this tweet. Now, this is from the person who is the agent for Mason Rudolph. He tweets, there are many risks an NFL quarterback assumes with every snap taken on the field, being hit on your uncovered head by a helmet, being swung by a 275-pound defensive end is not one of them. Tonight could have had a catastrophic ending. The matter will be reviewed thoroughly. Again, that's coming from the agent for Mason Rudolph. And then quickly look at this as well. This is from Marcus Gilbert, who is a former Steeler offensive lineman who now plays for the Arizona Cardinals. He tweeted, suspend fake tough guy Miles Garrett for the rest of the year, period. So certainly some strong words there. Now, Mason Rudolph also had some strong words about the incident last night, while Garrett took an apologetic tone. I know his Bush League, you know, he's, you know, total coward move on his part. You know, I, I, I mean, it's, it's okay, though, you know, I'll take it. I'm, I'm not going to back down from any bully. That is embarrassing. You know, what I did was more foolish, and I shouldn't have allowed myself to, to slip like that. Now, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin declined to comment after the game when reporters asked him about that fight. His counterpart, though, Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens, called his players' actions totally unacceptable. We should also pass along to you that there's not much time for these two teams to cool off because they're going to face each other again, this time in Pittsburgh in a little more than two weeks on Sunday, December 1st at Heinz Field. WPIL championships will be at Heinz Field this weekend. You'll be able to watch the games on our sister station, Pittsburgh CW. Four games coming your way tomorrow, starting at 11. Stowe Rocks, Clareton, that's the 1A game. And then you got the 3A game at 2, Aliquippa and Central Valley, Bell Vernon and TJ at 5, Pine Richland Central Catholic at 8. That is the 6A title game. Again, the WPIL championships here on KDKA and Pittsburgh CW. One family going all out for their holiday display. See what they're adding to make it more authentic. But first, the change to the program at the Pitt Dental School. How they are transitioning from opioid use.
Building your dream home or remodeling your current home, the Seven Springs Log and Timber Frame Home Show is the place to start. Free daily educational workshops, manufacturers, and builders that'll give you the expertise about your next home. This Friday through Sunday only at the Seven Springs Mountain Resort. Tickets at loghomeshows.com. 1850 Coffee. Inspired by the year the Folger Coffee Company began. With a bold yet smooth taste. 1850 Coffee. Begin boldly. Hey, Dad. Hey. So I went to Lowe's and got some shelves. Cool idea. When so, doing it right runs in the family. Yeah, won't be easy, but it'll be great. You give the gifts that work hard. So Lowe's has hardworking brands like DeWalt, Cobalt, and Craftsman. Because you can bring the holidays together. Ta-da! Even if you're apart. Wow. We love it. <laughs> Get your choice of Craftsman Power Tool Kit or Air Compressor for $99. Do it right for less. Start with Lowe's. I like to hunt, I like to fish, I just like to be out in the woods. I had both my legs amputated due to Berger's disease. And when they cut your legs off, you don't know whether you're going to be able to ever walk again or not. I was told this was the place to go for rehab. They got me up walking. I don't think I could have done it on my own. I demanded my recovery. I demanded Encompass Health. Kids, pets, stains. Wouldn't it be nice to have floors that stand up to life's messy moments? Now you can during the Lee's National Flooring Event at Russmer Floors. Right now, save $500 on select Lee's carpet. The only carpet with a 25-year no-exclusion stain warranty. That's right, absolutely no exclusions. Plus, save big on hardwood, luxury vinyl tile, and more. And right now at Russmer Floors, get free financing until 2021. The Lee's National Carpet Event. Relax. It's Russmer. See A Bronx Tale, the hit Broadway musical, right in your own neighborhood. It's Jersey Boys meets West Side Story. November 19th through 24th at the Benham Center. Tickets at PressStarts.org. PNC Broadway in Pittsburgh. Building your dream home or remodeling your current home, the Seven Springs Log and Timber Frame Home Show is the place to start. Free daily educational workshops, manufacturers and builders that'll give you the expertise about your next home. This Friday through Sunday only at the Seven Springs Mountain Resort. Tickets at LogHomeShows.com. Do salt lamps and caves really have healing power? Hours, the truth about the salt sensation today at five. Hey, good morning. Temperatures as we're starting off today, mid 20s out there. We were expecting to bottom out at around 25 degrees in the Pittsburgh area. It's going to be another cold one. Temperatures a good 10 to 15 degrees colder than the average today than what we normally would see this time of the year. We're expecting a high temperature of about 40 degrees. We'll see some sunshine this morning and even this afternoon, but there'll be a few more clouds around this afternoon as we're working our way through the day. Uh, we'll talk about your weekend forecast. Chilly weather sticking around for that. It's coming up. University of Pittsburgh Dental School has got a new accolade this morning. It's now the first in the nation to set opioid free pain relief guidelines. The change covers all of Pitt's dental clinic and advocates for opioid alternatives whenever possible. Pitt researchers say studies have shown opioid alternatives are a better option after wisdom teeth removal. A combination of ibuprofen, that's Advil, with acetaminophen, that's Tylenol, works every bit as well as a Vicodin, as a Percocet, as those opioids, uh, and doesn't have all the side effects. The American Dental Association says when opioids are necessary, they should be limited to a seven-day supply. Still ahead, see the fight many will be talking about this morning, a Browns player going after the Steelers quarterback. We'll have more and break this down for you after the break. Daughter's 15 and out of control. She steals your car and wrecks it. There's a lot of scratches. You're missing the point. The conversation is, you stole my car. New Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Today at 3, followed by KDKA TV News at 4. I'm Brian from 1 800 Got Junk. You never know how much junk you've got until you move. Point to something you wish would disappear. Would it be possible to. It's gone. We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point.
innovative trucks to serve the people who depend on them. Cabins to comfort. Power to do more. Now to say thank you, we're extending our employee pricing plus to everyone. What's right for the people who build your trucks is right for you. Welcome to the Ram Nation. With Employee Pricing Plus all month long, purchase and get $12,478 in total values for 25% below MSRP on the 2019 Ram 1500. I'm Brian from 1-800-GOT-JUNK. You never know how much junk you've got until you move. Point to something you wish would disappear. Would it be possible to... It's gone! We make junk disappear. All you have to do is point. Salt lamps, salt baths, salt caves. The so-called healing power of salt is a multi-billion dollar industry. So it must really work, right? I hadn't been able to breathe that well for years. The truth about the salt sensation, today at 5. Football is a rough sport, but the end of the Steelers-Browns game last night was violent. Now the end, eight seconds was all that was left on the clock. Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph completing a pass and then behind the play gets taken down to the ground. Some talk between Rudolph as he tries to pull the helmet off of the quarterback, or excuse me, off of Miles Garrett, who picks Rudolph up by the helmet, oh. takes his helmet off and then swings it and hits him in the head with it. There were ejections of not only Miles Garrett, but also of Marquise Pouncey who comes in and a Browns player who then pushed Mason Rudolph to the ground from behind. Browns coach Freddie Kinchin says he was embarrassed by what happened. Unbelievable. It's hard to stop watching that. Hard to watch in itself. It's we want to see. It too. is, yeah. yeah. Let's find out what's happening in the world of radio this morning as John Shumway is flying solo this morning from 1020. Yeah. Good hey. morning. Yeah, that is the topic of the day. Give me just a half second. Hang on. Got a few things sometimes that need to happen as far Where as the uh, control effort. And oh, there we go. Like that. No, he's got a few changes on the board that he's got to make. But if we played like the Benny Hill music right now, it'd be really good. Da, 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 and that's a circus song. And there Wait, he is. John, just so you can know. Can you hear me now? Yes, yep, we, can. we can. We were playing the <laughs> Benny Hill music as you ran around there for a little while. And, and some circus music in the background, too. It was, it was a good show. Yeah, it was a little switch. I forgot to throw. Sorry. No, it was good. That, it's all good. It was entertaining. <laughs> You know, they, there could have been a few punches not thrown last night, and it would have been a better thing in Cleveland. Everybody's going to be talking about this today. It's, it is the topic, and there's a lot of blame to go around. Mm. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of frustration there at the end of the game, and they're going to play these guys in a couple of weeks. Right, and so what happens then? You know, I think uh, there's a lot to talk about that happened that shouldn't have happened, but the fact that we lost, too, it's like just more salt in the wound, right? I know this is going to sound strange, but... The fact that the fight that happened allows us not to talk about the fact we lost. I, yeah, I, <laughs> you know. I, I, but there are there are a lot of other issues here to bring up too, and not oh, the least time. of which, you know, that was not those were not the only ejections. Those three right there were not right. because there had been other ejections in the game for helmet to helmet hits. Juju Smith-Schuster now out with a concussion right. last night. Right. Johnson out with a concussion. James Conner. No, I mean this was a violent game yeah. in so many regards, and and like you said, you know. Ron and I were talking a little ago during the commercial break. The fact that it's on a Thursday, just four days after both teams had played Sunday Exhausted. games. Exhausted, right. I don't know. I mean, at some well, point, you know, does the league look at that, too? But uh, Yeah, and the other rough. factor, too, is that, remember, because it's a Thursday night, everybody's watching, mm -hmm. including a lot of very, uh, shall we say, young people who could be influenced by the way these professional athletes handle themselves. And there was a lot of reaction field. from the other players in the league, too, which means the right. rest of the league was All watching on Thursday yeah. as well. Yeah. There's always been bad blood between Pittsburgh and Cleveland, but uh, never like we saw it last night. Uh, that that was just the ugliest thing, and, and it does make you worry about what's going to happen at Heinz Field in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, you think back to the Turkey Jones picking Terry Bradshaw up and throwing him. I mean, there have been other pretty rough you know, shots in this series over the years, but boy, last night, yeah, it was, it was very, very hard to watch. Yeah, hard yeah to it'll watch. be interesting mm -hmm. to see what the league does, and they're going to need to do it quickly to send a message. What have you got going on the program this morning? I know you're by yourself today. Who's on? We're going to be uh, talking about the Pet Expo that's coming up uh, this weekend. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll also be talking, of course, about this. We're going to talk to Chris Hope, two-time Super Bowl uh, stealer, and of course, We'll run down the new movies for the weekend as well. Excellent. Are you taking his bike to the Pet Expo? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Now you'd terrify everybody. I know. The, the people would be just it. scared to death of him. 
Yeah, his hair will be staying straight Spike's up on his nose. Spike's that yeah. big. Is it a chihuahua? That's, that's why we call him Spike, because no. his hair is... Maltese? Yeah. What, are you ha what are you working with, John? He, he's a Westie. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's, he's vicious. real vicious. Uh -oh. Frightful. Bark hey, you guys shadow. have a great weekend. All right, All thank right, you, John. Bye, John. And now, the Armina Stone real-time traffic report. Starting off the Friday morning with several accidents. There was an inbound crash on Route 28. That scene actually just cleared. It was between exit 10 and exit 8, so pretty close to Fox Chapel Road. We're in good shape, though, so this icon will be disappearing shortly. That crash did clear pretty quickly on 28, which is good news. We have a crew heading to the scene of a crash with power lines down in North Fayette Township. So Cliff Mine Road is blocked in both directions between Logan Road and Gorewood Drive. Now we have another crash. This one is in Shaler Township, a rollover accident. So this is on East Genesee Avenue and Lindbergh Avenue. So use caution traveling around those two roadways in Shaler. And then for drivers out in Strongstown, Indiana County, Route 403, you could see it here, just reopened traffic it was closed due to an earlier crash that has been cleared no issues as far as drive times go on the parkways heather selena thank you allegheny county police are investigating a deadly home invasion in wilkinsburg police say two men entered the home along woodlawn avenue just before 10 30 and held up everyone inside including a baby during the robbery the suspect shot a 42 year old man several times he died there at the scene New this morning, Bethel Park Police asking for assistance. They're looking for this missing woman. Her name is Jamie Ray Feeden, last seen two months ago on September, on the 15th of September. So it has been almost two months to the day. She's 33 years old. She is four feet, one inch tall. If you have seen her, you are asked to contact police. Another deadly school shooting. This time it was at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita, California. Uh, police say a student identified as Nathan Burhau killed two students and injured three others before shooting himself in the head yesterday morning. He carried out that shooting on his 16th birthday. Police have not identified a motive for the attack. Several classes in the Steel Valley School District will be canceled today, and they are building specific. So pay close attention to this. The district shutting down the high school, the middle school, and the tech center today. Elementary students will go as scheduled. The issue has to do with a fire alarm problem and an emergency system problem. So again, high school, middle school, and the tech center in the Steel Valley District closed today. Police have released surveillance images of the men who robbed the K jewelers at Tanger Outlets. That was on Wednesday night. The same men who used hammers to smash glass display cases and then take off with handfuls of jewelry. Police found the getaway car at a nearby hotel. It had reportedly been stolen earlier in the day from Robinson Township. Happening today, House Democrats will hold the second day of public impeachment hearings. Marie Ivanovich is scheduled to testify. She is the former amb U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, recalled by President Trump. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi appeared to raise the stakes of the inquiry by publicly accusing the president of bribery. And we will be carrying CBS News live coverage of today's impeachment inquiry hearing. That is expected to begin at 9 o'clock this morning here on KDKA. And because of that, it's unlikely you'll see Pittsburgh Today Live this morning. However, you will be able to catch it in its entirety on Pittsburgh CW, where it airs every weekday at 1 p.m. Ron? All right, gorgeous start to our day. It's going to be clear skies as we are starting off, but we will see a few clouds rolling in. We'll call it partly cloudy, turning mostly cloudy for your afternoon. It should be mostly clear to fair skies this morning as you're starting off. 25 degrees, the uh, temperature at this point. Wind is calm with the barometer 30, 31 hundredths of an inch. The uh, dew point coming in 20 degrees this morning. So even though those temperatures are in the mid 20s and we're expecting to bottom out at about 25, about where we are now, uh, the dew point is still a couple of degrees away, so we do have some a little bit of play there where we could see uh, temperatures falling still even a little bit further. 26 in Butler, Franklin 27 this hour, Latrobe 27 in Washington at 20 degrees. We're expecting our high today of about 40 degrees. Once again, increasing uh, cloud cover out there and the winds out of the west northwest at around 5 to 10 miles an hour for your day. Here's how I think your day is going to break down. We'll put the uh, temperature coming in at about 10 o'clock at 30 degrees. Noon temperature 35 with those clouds starting to build at that point. And we'll keep it partly cloudy to mostly cloudy for the rest of the day. What about our rain chances or snow chances? Doesn't look like we'll see anything today, but Overnight tonight, we will have a chance as a cold front slides in from the north, moving down to obviously to the south. 
You can see a couple of those very isolated snow showers that radar is trying to pick up. Once again, during this time of the year, a, a lot of times it doesn't take a lot of moisture in order for us to get some snow showers out there. And so we're going to keep a 20% chance for some snow in the forecast as that cold front, what we call technically a backdoor cold front, slides down to our southwest. Now, it'll also leave us with some chilly weather that will be sticking around for uh, the week, it looks like at this point or at least for the weekend. Uh, high temperatures tomorrow probably won't even hit the 40 degree mark, probably the coldest over the next seven. We're back up into the mid 40s by Sunday and Monday. Little cooler on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's when we also have a chance for some light rain showers. Uh, getting into the forecast late Tuesday into Wednesday. And then we finally warm up. We're about 54 for a high on Thursday. Back to more seasonal weather as we're heading into next weekend. Not going to find any bad lights in an Ohio family Christmas display. <laughs> Which well-known family they're trying to mimic this holiday season. That should give you a clue. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Temperatures this morning into the mid 20s for the most part, but we do have some outliers in places like Tanning, Elwood City, 22, Waynesburg, all the way down to 20 degrees. But then you go over to Somerset and they're at 30 degrees this morning with the Jeanette area coming in at 29 degrees. So we do have a decent spread there with temperatures. High temperatures today should be at about 40 degrees in Pittsburgh. Another cool one today. We cool down even further than that. A high of just 38 expected on Saturday. We'll keep it mainly dry over the weekend. Only chance for some snow, Selena, looks to be overnight tonight. Just a couple of flurries that'll be possible. Doesn't sound too bad. Thanks, Ron. There was an earlier accident on Route 28 near Fox Chapel Road. That scene cleared up pretty quickly, and you could see from the flow map you're traveling above the speed limit, so not finding any problem spots right now on 28 heading into the city. The drive time is back to right around 10 minutes from Oakmont to Pittsburgh, quiet on 51 and on 79 from Bridgeville to the Parkway. Just a heads up, we do have an overturned vehicle. This is in Shaler Township, east of Genesee Avenue and Lindbergh Avenue. Avoid that area. And in North Fayette, there is a crash with down power lines. Cliff Mine Road is blocked between Logan Road and Gorewood Drive, rather. Heather and Rick. Selena, thank you. A family in Ohio decided to recreate the Griswold holiday light display from the movie Na National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Now, if you like Chevy Chase, like Greg and Rachel certainly do, they've <laughs> been decorating their home just like his for the past seven years. Every year they've added a little something extra. More lights, more items, including Cousin Eddie's RV. And it's all part of the display that has actually gotten so big that it extends into their neighbor's yard now. Every time... It's on TV. We always end up sitting down and watching it and being like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's try that this year. Family collects donations from visitors, by the way, when they come by to take a look at the house. And then they donate that money to an organization that supports cystic fibrosis research. That's for a good cause. What do you think the neighbors think, though? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it, it certainly is in some of those situations where people get you know, all decorated like that. The neighbors kind of get a little frustrated. Yeah. But at the same time, obviously, one neighbor says it's fine. Put your RV in my yard. Welcome it. Cousin Eddie can stay here if he's in town. Anyway, Christmas vacation theme already starting up. So many things to quote from that movie. 5.57 right now on your Friday morning. And a whole lot more to come here, including breakdown of the Steeler game that got violent at the end. Uh, have you seen this hit by a Browns defensive player on Mason Rudolph? We are back in just 90 seconds with the 6 o'clock hour of the KDK Morning News. Reaction from the players involved in last night's brawl. We'll have team coverage with Lisa Washington and Rich Walsh coming up.